one service. What about our worship today? Can we just give Jesus a clap of praise today? Thank you, Sheila, for leading us into the presence of God. You can now be seated. Welcome to our 11.30 a.m. service. Church, I'm just so excited because we are sensing the momentum of growth. Did you know that today in our 10 a.m. service, again, more than 70 people came to our first service. But you know what? My most favorite service and the best service, the 5 p.m. I thought you were going to say you, no? <laughs> because the 5 p.m., they come here late and they stay here late. No, just kidding. I'm fired up today. How many of you are watching AD? So we're going on a series on the book of Acts and we entitled it Fired Up. When the Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost and fired them up. And today, I want to take your attention to the screen. And the message for today is the Empire Strikes, strikes Back. And are there any Star Wars fans in the house? You know... I got this inspiration from this verse. I want you to read this with along, along with me, Charisma, in Acts 4, 1 to 2. Read it aloud, please. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, they were confronted by the priest, the captain of the temple guard, and some of the Sadducees. These leaders were greatly disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that through Jesus, there is a resurrection of the dead. They arrested them, and since it was already evening, put them in jail until morning. That's where I get the inspirational uh, topic, Empire Strikes Back. In the book of Acts, you see the, a major collision between an empire called religious empire and Christianity. Check this out. Peter and John were speaking to the people. They were confronted by priests, the captain of the temple guard, some of the Sadducees, an all-in, all-out war against Christianity. Why? They put them in jail. Why? What did Peter and John do? They just help a lame man walk. Check this out. What a miracle. Remember that story from the AD? That is the first recorded miracle where they use in the name of Jesus. And that is what we do in praying for the sick. What a miracle. A man lame for 40 years. Lame from birth, never experienced how to walk, how to jump, how to stand on its own feet. And then all of a sudden, he saw Peter and John on the way to church. And Peter said, we don't have money, silver and gold, have we none? But in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Everybody say, what a miracle. <laughs> and then after that, what a message. Everybody say, what a message. What a message. After, how many of you know miracles will draw attention? Yes. Amen. If you see a layman walking, it will get your attention, right? If you see a blind man started uh, uh, seeing something, if you see a, a deaf ear started hearing, it will get your attention. So all of the people came and checked out this awesome miracle. Everybody say, what a miracle. And you know what's the result of this? What a mess. They got arrested. Isn't that, what? A man who was lame since birth, now walking. And these two innocent guys, Peter and John, they were not applauded. They were applauded by the crowds, but by the religious leader, they were arrested. That's why today, I want to take your attention to Empire Strikes Back. There is an empire even in the book of Acts, that's against Christianity, and it is religion. Charisma, I'm a pastor. I want to be known as Jesus' man. But I don't want to be known as a religious man. 
I want to be known as a spiritual man, but I don't want to be known as a ritual man. Uh, maybe some of you young people could tell me what this emblem or logo is. Would you please? What, what is this? What's that? Read it aloud. He is greater than I. Started in Hawaii, right? John 3.30, He greater than I. Today I'd like to take attention to a message called Jesus is greater than religion. Everybody say this with me. Jesus is greater in religion. Everybody say it again. Jesus is greater than religion. You know, when I was standing to become a pastor, one of the awesome writers that I admire the most, his name is Dr. Charles Swindoll. And one of his teaching in the book of Acts, I could not forget this quote, and I want to quote it to all of you today. I want you to read this along, along with me. One, two, three. The greatest adversary to Christianity Let's read this again. The greatest adversary to Christianity is religion. Steve Jobs passed away, and sad to say he was probably never really no a relationship with Jesus, but he, when he was a kid, he grows up in a liturgical church. Well, rituals and all the one, nine yards, wearing gowns at the church, and he got bored with it because there's ritual, but there's no life. And this is what he said. He walked out of the church and he said, the juice goes out of Christianity when it becomes too based on faith. When he said faith means ritual tradition rather than on living for Jesus or seeing the world as Jesus saw it. What an indictment toward the church. So today, I want to expose to us two truths, and I want you to decide for yourself, okay? First of all, I want to share to you how religion operates. Let's read this together. When threatened, religion exercises intimidation. Let's read it aloud. One, two, three. When threatened, religion exercises intimidation. Let's look at this, the text for today. Let's... The, the next day, now, Peter and John were incarcerated at night time. The next day, first thing morning, they faced the court. And this is what happened. Let's read, the, let's read it together. The next day, the leaders of the court and the leaders of the people and the teachers of the law, wow, came together in Jerusalem. Annas, the head of the religious leader, was there. Caiaphas, John, Alexander were there. Also, all who were in the family of the head of religious leader. Everybody say religious leader. This is all in, all out war against Christianity. This is how religion operates. When it's being threatened, they exercise intimidation. Imagine, that's very intimidating. Look at the picture here of the next slide. This is the Sanhedrin, the, the high priest, and all of the leaders of the court of the law, the, of the people back in the day, against two individuals. They were trying to intimidate them. That's how religion operates. Christianity operates by being intimate with Jesus, but religion operates by intimate, intimidating us. Another thing about religion, church, I hope you're taking notes because you will encounter people like this. When suspicious, religion employs, everybody say, interrogation. Let's read this verse together. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to what? Question them. What power? What name? Did you do this? They were interrogating Peter for the power that they performed in healing the lame man. I, I, check this out. Look at this picture. This, these two individuals are, 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 are like charged like criminals for praying for somebody to get well. When suspicious, religious people interrogate. You know, I'll just be upfront to you today. I encounter a lot of religious people before, and I'll, I'll be honest and confess to you, I was one of them before. Very judgmental. 
You know, there was a time when people will write letter to me. And they will send letter to me and my wife said, there's no use for humor from the pulpit. Don't crack joke, pastor. And I was, what are you doing? That's me, right? I, I'm a, I, I like to, I, I'm a funny man. <laughs> I look at the mirror and I laugh at myself. And it relieves stress from me. And say, don't use humor. And then sometimes I, I, I was confronted. said, Pastor, I saw the young people smoking. Confront them. Then I asked them, this person, Sister, what are they smoking? Pastor, they're smoking cigarettes. Oh, good. I told her, good. That's a big improvement. You know, a few months ago, they were smoking something, not cigarettes. <laughs> trying to say, I'm not condoning that, condo but I'm trying to say, let the Holy Spirit do the changing. In the I'm not going to police after you who's smoking, who's drinking. No, it's you and God and let God deal with you. Yes. Just listen to me carefully. When you go fishing, you catch the fish first before you clean it up. But what we're doing is, we're cleaning up people and we haven't caught them yet. Everybody say this with me. Belong, belong believe, believe, behave. Believe. Religion says you must believe and behave. Then you could belong to the church. And that's not Christianity. Did you know when Jesus called Peter? He was a foul-mouthed guy. He called Judas, who was a crook. He called Thomas, who was a doubter. Did that disqualify them? Jesus said, come, come alongside. Man, let's go on a journey for three years. Give your life to me. I'll pour my life to you. You belong to me. Uh, even though you're not doubting, you're not behaving well, just belong. And then later on, the Holy Spirit will touch you. Come on, somebody. Religion operates when suspicious. They interrogate. Some people are so religious, they go to church not to worship, but to interrogate. They are gifted with the spirit of criticism. The band is too loud. The Panera bread came late. The coffee tastes like tea. There's no ashers. They don't worship. They come to church like this. And I'm telling you today, if that is your attitude, you will always find something not nice in this church. But if your attitude, I'm here to worship God, I'm here to live for God and hear the word of God, you will get it here. Come on, somebody. Religion is so suspicious in interrogate. And you know what? Religion, when lifeless, religion employs tradition. He is from Jesus Christ. Jesus had a bout with those religious people too, not just Peter and John. Let's read this together, Charisma. These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me for laying aside the commandment of God. You hold the tradition of man. And then example of tradition, washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. Did you know, in the Old Testament, God gave 613 commands to obey. And the religious leader added thousands more. <laughs> and the religious leaders added commands that is so absurd. It has nothing to do with the cleanliness of the heart. It has something to do with external. Religion always focuses on the outside, right? Cleanliness of the pictures, the cups, and the other side. It's like ceremonial washing that before you eat, if you don't wash your hand before you eat, you committed a sin. And you know, Jesus was invited to a party in a religious house. Jesus intentionally did not clean his hand. And I'm just imagining what the food is being served. Here's Jesus grinning and smiling. And then he showed his dirty hands. And he dipped Mediterranean dish, probably on the bread, on the olive oil, and he ate it, and then he smiled, and he double dip again, 
And all the religious said, oh my gosh, curse is a sin. No, hear me out. Jesus is not mean. If you would come to Jesus and invite him to a dinner, hey, Jesus, my wife is a germaphobe. Here's a Purell, hand sanitizer. Jesus would do that. But if you say, Jesus, if you don't hand, wash your hands, it's a sin. See the difference? That's what they're doing here. You have to obey all this tradition, all the way to the laws, and it's lifeless. Look at me. This is religion, a mirror. I can see myself clearly. I have a lot of lines. <laughs> I have some dirt in my face. But will this mirror get those lines out of my face? Will this mirror get those dirt out of my face? It has no power to cl clean my life. All it shows is the dirt in my face. That's what religion does. You're a sinner. You're a liar. You're condemned. You're done. You're doomed. But no power to lift you up. Religion gives intimidation instead of inspiration. Religion gives interrogation instead of affirmation. Religion gives you tradition instead of celebration. Now, that's how religion operates. Now, here's the other side. Jesus is greater than religion. Let's look at the operating system of Jesus. And of course, we're talking about the Holy Spirit because Jesus went back to heaven and He sent the Holy Spirit. This is how you know the Holy Spirit is moving in the church or in your life. Number one, everybody say with me, the focus is on Jesus. Look what Peter said to the religious leaders. Not backing down. Let's read this together. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we, everybody say, we must say. Everybody say, it's a must. And who's that name? A lot of religious groups are, are mad at this verse. They're saying Christianity is narrow-minded. There are many, many roads to God, not just Jesus. And they call us narrow-minded. But church, listen to me. We're not going to back down. This is what the Bible says. Let's read this in the New Century Version. Let's read this together, Charisma. Jesus is the only one who can save people, no one else. Can everybody say amen to that? Amen. No one else. Everybody say, no one else. No one else. That's not being narrow-minded. That's being truthful and realistic. What if you ask me, PJ, what's your number? What's your cell phone number? And I will tell, say to you, that's, I don't want to be offending to other numbers. Just dial any number. My phone will ring. Huh? <laughs> will, 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 will you, you're crazy. <laughs> dial any number and your phone rings. Let me just tell you this. There is only one dial number you could ring to heaven, and his name is Jesus. Yeah. Not Mary, not Paul, not Peter, only Jesus. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And you know that you know that the Holy Spirit is moving in Peter's life. He did not put attention to himself. Hey, I am the first Pope of the Holy Church of Rome, and I made that man walk. I belong to the Council of Jerusalem. You know what Peter said? Let's read this together, Charisma. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name. And the faith that comes through him has completely healed him. As you can all see. Wow. Peter is not holding back. He said, it's the name of Jesus. Not the church, not the ritual, not the tradition. You know, as a pastor now for more than 20 years, I've never heard people from this, oh, I'm having a hard time in my life. Oh, I wish if I could get more religion and ritual and tradition in my life, my life will be blessed. No, I never heard that from them. What I hear is that if I can get closer to Jesus, if I can become my relationship with God strong, Amen, church? The focus is on 
Jesus. That's why at our church, I always tell our people, please don't elevate PJ. If you elevate me, I'll be an easy target for the devil. Just surround me with your prayers. And we're in this together. Amen. And let's elevate Jesus here. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. When the Holy Spirit is moving, the focus is not an individual, gifted, human, pastor, prophet, apostle, teacher, doctor. The focus is on the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Number two, when the Holy Spirit moves, everybody say the ground is level. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Let's read this together, Charisma. The members of the council were amazed and were, saw the boldness of Peter and John. They could see that they were ordinary men. No special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men. But everybody read the last phrase. Men who had been in Jesus. Here's the problem. The religious leaders believe in elitism or elite, elite club. It's only the chosen family, the high priest family, can interpret the Bible and speak the word of God to you guys. And this Peter and John were just fishermen, no special training. The Greeks leader have been under the feet of Gamaliel, Josephus, and all the great uh, church fathers. And they were saying, who are these guys? They're just ordinary men. No special training. But they saw this. They had been with Jesus. Charisma, wouldn't it be good after this service today, when you go eat, when you go back to work, when you go back to your workplace this week, something will say to you, you had been with Jesus, huh? Not just because the way you talk. Because... Amen, amen, somebody. Amen. If I touch that electrical socket today, I'll get electrocuted, right? There's power. If we touch Jesus, there's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. That even your pets could know you have been with Jesus. Because before you're a pet owner, Friday night, you just go out there and come home so drunk. When you come home, you kick your dog, you kick your cat. Now you come on the weekend reading the Bible and the dog will say, Wow, my master had been with Jesus. Even the pet could recognize that. And if you notice, religion are always concerned of titles. Chief priests, high priests, members of the council. What do they call Peter and John? Everybody say Peter and John. There's not even Peter above John. Or Peter ahead of John. One level. At the foot of the cross, church, the ground is level. We are all sinners saved by grace. The ground is level. I've been through some churches before that there are special chairs on the stage area. And in the middle chair is only for the most high pastor. No one will sit there. The pulpit is so huge. And there's a circle. It's like a circle. If you step in in the circle, you'll be dead. If you're not supposed to be there. Charisma, this is our pulpit. A music stand. Because I believe what's important is not the music stand but the Bible being preached from the pulpit. Come on, somebody. You don't see special parking for pastors here. I always tell our people, don't park at the back. That's where I park, by the, gar by the garbage. Because it reminds me as a pastor, I am a human garbage collector. That's true. I listen to a lot of garbage, right? And I pray. The ground is level. Amen, somebody? You know the Holy Spirit is moving when there's sacrificial generosity. Let's read this together, Charisma. I want you to read this with me. There's sacrificial generosity here. 
Number three, all the believers were one in heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had with great power. Apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. God's grace was powerfully work at in them all. What's happening here? When they reported, hey, we've got beaten up, and, uh, and we're so happy, and then they were saying to them, Let's help the work of God more. You know, back in the day, in the book of Acts, people will sell their houses, their possession, and bring it to the apostles' feet, to the church, to spread the gospel. Caring for every need. That's more than a tithe. And now here's the parameter, church. Listen to me carefully. One of the practice of sacrificial generosity is when you pay your tithe. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. The biblical way. The 10%. Not chop, chop, chop. All in for Jesus. That's just a basic. Amen, somebody. Amen. And there was a time when we, we bought this property. We don't have money at all in the bank, but we believe God. God is giving us this vision. People selling their cars. People selling their jewelries. Giving us a, 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 their, a, their titles to sell it. Things like that. And we want to build the house for Jesus. And that's what's happening here. Sacrificial generosity. I live my life with palms up. Always hand it to me, give it to me. You know, I want to live a life with palms down. Bless me, Lord, so I could bless others. Bless me, Lord, so I could be a channel of blessing. Because the blessing ended just in me, it can corrupt me. But when the blessing goes through me, the blessing will go and flow and overflow and more to come. That's what Jesus said, right? Give and she'll give it back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Do you want to have the running over blessing in your life? Yes. Do you give? Yes. That's the question. The running over comes when you give. Church of God, back in the day, they have sacrificial generosity. They take care of their own. Number four, their supernatural joy. Everybody say supernatural joy. Supernatural. Look at the response of the religious leaders. I want you to read this with me. Acts 4, 2. Everybody, one, two, three. They were greatly disturbed. Religious people are greatly disturbed. They are always disturbed. They have always long face. Charisma, don't you think you'll be a good witness to your unchurched friends if they see your face always long? As if your face is the front cover for the book of Lamentations. <laughs> well, ever since I became a Christian, I'm so happy. I'm so blessed. Church, this is supernatural joy. After they beat them up, I want you to read this with me. Charisma, I want you to read this with me. Want to look at the next the, re the reaction of the believers. Let's read this together. They called the apostles in, beat them, told them not to speak in the name of Jesus again. Then they let them go free. The apostle left the meeting. Everybody said, because they were given the honor of suffering, disgrace for Jesus. You know, I check out the word full of joy here. In the Greek, in the original, it's a baby laughing uncontrollably. Have you seen babies? They easily laugh, right? Even at little things. Just watch this. I just watch this. Look, watch this video, please. Here we go. when you let your husband babysit your baby. <laughs> Only dad will do that. They're not taking away the, the baby carrier, right? It gives the baby keep buying head. But did you notice the baby? Just at the sight of ripping off the paper, he's laughing. So simple. But now, when we become adult, it's so hard for us to laugh. But here, 
this group of people were beaten up. Look at the picture at this Peter and John. As if they won the Super Bowl, right? And look at the, pic the, the picture depicted in the book 80. They're cheering them on. And you know what they're saying? Forget about the bruises and the blood and the broken bones. It's an honor to suffer disgrace for Jesus. Charisma, and may I be honest with you, we don't know really persecution in America. Persecution is like those kids in Kenya, in a Christian school. And here comes the ISIS and ask them, are you Christians? Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Those kids, yes, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. Bang, bang, bang. Hundreds of them died on the spot because they confessed. What is the persecution we experience here? I'm persecuted, pastor. My friend befriended me. Took me away from his friends list. Persecution is I order a super sized meal and the server forget to catch up. And the master, Jesus, do you experience that kind of persecution when you're here on earth? Persecution experience here, traffic on the freeway. I'm persecuted. 405 is not moving. Hello. Persecution is when your life is between life and death. Are you still going to choose Jesus? Yeah. And when there's gun in your head, they got beaten up and they went out and celebrated with the people. I said, wow, it's time for us to celebrate. We have this honor to suffer this grace for Jesus. One of our pastors, heroes in our network, is Pastor Said. Some of you heard his name until now, he's still locked up in Iran for being a believer of Jesus Christ. Years now, but still holding on to his faith in the Lord. They are saying to him, just deny your Jesus and we'll send you back to America. You'll see your girl, you'll see your daughter, you'll see your wife. He said, oh, I cannot deny my Jesus. And you know what's happening inside the jail? True story. Most of the persecutors, the police, they will see a vision of Jesus in a white cloth. And the man will say, go to the Bible and you will find me. And Muslims are becoming a believer of Jesus Christ just by opening the Bible. The point is this, when there's hit, when there's suffering, when there's persecution, the church will not stop. It's like a wildfire that it will grow. I think what we need in America today is a little bit of shaking of the sleeping giant. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. God did not call us to be convenient and live in our comfort zone. God called us to be his representative here. As I come to conclusion today, we see here two different things. Jesus and religion. The enemy of Jesus is religion. Grace is greater than law. Conviction is greater than condemnation. Celebration is greater than tradition. And destiny is greater than history. I want you to stand up on your feet today. Charisma, you did not come here to hear a homily or an anecdote or to do some ritual or tradition. We are here to hear Jesus. And Jesus wants you to know, you don't need to do something for, for Him to love you. It's done. He loved you already at the cross. No matter what you do, His love will never change for you. It's not by your good works. It's only by His grace. Today, there's one word probably God wants to hear or want, wants to tell to you. I want you to say this to yourself too because sometimes you, you're so hard on yourself. Sometimes you need to forgive yourself and just embrace the grace of God. As you hear these words being sung by Richard today, this tells 
sums up Christianity. Religion is, I must love Jesus, I must love Jesus. Christianity, Jesus loves me, period. It's not based out of my love for Him. It's totally based off His love for me. Church.
truth, church. Just embrace it, receive it, sing it, church. Yes, Jesus loves me. sin but he loves sinners and he became sin so that you can become right with God he he paid it all he took the debt he didn't deserve he paid the debt he did not owe and he lived the life that you and I can never live so that your life today is live not by works but by grace is receiving the love and the mercy of God receiving the forgiveness of God receiving the power of the Holy Spirit oh I pray today that people will say you have been with Jesus but not because you had ritual or, or religion but because you have a relationship with Jesus Charisma, that's what we stand for. We're all about Jesus here. We're all about making Jesus' name famous and known. Not charisma, it's just a nice little game, but Jesus is all and all and all. We are, the ground is level here. We're not into title, we're not into bossing around here. We're into serving one another, loving one another, forgiving one another. Also, let's be generous. Let's give. Rich people are not generous. The generous people are the ones who are giving. But let's just give unto the Lord. Give what we can. Give until it hurts. And God will supply all our needs. And last but not the least, let there be joy in your life. I know life is tough. I know we have a lot of bills and problems to, to face. But let them never take away the joy of God in your life. You're going to heaven. You've been forgiven. You've been accepted. And nothing could change the fact that Jesus died for you. And that is something that you can shout to the world. And you could be joyful about that you're blessed. And you have been received by the Lord just as you are. That's something to be grateful for. And church... Times will be tough in America, I'm telling you. Times will be tough. Sometimes there will be persecution along the way. Let us be true to our faith. And let us be true to Jesus. And let's count it as an honor to suffer this grace for Jesus. And every believer and follower of Jesus say, Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise today.